Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my Sea Perch series. My name is Hayden, and in this second installment, I'm going to be talking about and building an ROV frame. Your frame design is a very important aspect of your ROV, so it's important to get it right. Here are the rules regarding your frame. One, it must entirely be built from PVC, CPVC, or PEX pipe and fittings. Anything made of any other material must be attached onto the frame and not be a part of the frame. Two, all additions and modifications to your ROV cannot exceed $25. Make sure to keep a detailed list of expenses in your engineering notebook along with receipts for proof. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make a bonus video on how to do your engineering notebook. 3. Your ROV cannot exceed 18 inches in any dimension. Otherwise, you will not be able to complete the obstacle course pool challenge. 4. You can rearrange your frame a bit between the mission course and the obstacle course, but nothing can be added or taken off. 5. Adding and subtracting buoyancy between challenges is allowed. I personally don't like to do this because I like to keep my ROV simply neutrally buoyant, meaning it doesn't sink or float, but you may find a bit of extra buoyancy helps your ROV pick up objects in the water. And 6. I encourage you to look over the full list of rules regarding your frame on cperch.org to make sure they haven't made any updates. I say this because the budget was changed from $20 to $25 just last year. Also, different competition classes have different rules. If you have taken a physics class, you would know Newton's second law, which states that force is equal to mass times acceleration. We can flip that around to say that acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. This means that the force of our thrusters divided by the mass of the ROV will determine our acceleration. You also have to take hydrodynamics into account. When designing your ROV, try to envision it looking at the ROV head on. Or better yet, sketch out the front view. Essentially, the less you see of your ROV from that view, the more hydrodynamic it will be moving forward in the water. Thinking about it in these two ways, you would come to the conclusion that the smallest, lightest ROV would be the best. However, you have to take handling into account. ROVs are subject to tilting, rolling, and doing lots of other things that you don't want them to do. Larger ROVs are much more stable and easier to handle in the water. In conclusion, when designing your ROV, you must find the right balance between speed and handling, just like in Mario Kart. You will want to make a detailed sketch of your ROV frame before you actually make it. Think of where you will attach the thrusters and how. Think of where the hook and buoyancy will go. Brainstorm all of this with your team. I'm going to sketch a frame now and take you through how I do it. There's an elbow. Here's another elbow piece. Two T-joints with two more elbows in the back. All of these pieces are connected with pipes like that. Now these two T's have two elbow pieces coming out of the top connected by another piece of pipe. Now from what you see here, it's kind of hard to envision what the ROV is gonna look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw it from different angles. I'm gonna draw it from the front, from the top, and from the side. And th that'll help give a more complete picture of what the ROV will look like. Here's what the front will look like. You'll see the two elbows on either side connected with a piece of pipe. And then you'll see part of the T's and then the 90 degree elbows that look like that connected with a piece of pipe. And that is what the ROV will look like from the front. From the top, you'll see the two elbows connected with a piece of pipe. You'll see the two in the back as well, also connected. And these are the other two elbows that are going across the top. And you can see the parts of the T's on either side below them. And all of these have pipes as well, connecting, and a pipe in the middle. Finally, let's draw our ROV from the side view. Here is an elbow in the front. Here is the T fitting. Here is the elbow coming out of the top of that with another elbow in the back, all connected with pipe. The last step is just to label all the views. Front, top, and side. The next step is to actually dimension this, because we don't know how big this frame will be. I plan for the length of the ROV, in other words, from here to here, will be 10 inches. The width of the ROV, from here to here, will be 6 inches. And lastly, the height of the ROV will be however tall this distance is, from here to there. From the side view. Actually, I actually know the sizes of these pieces and I know that from here to here this distance is 1.8 and actually so is this. They're both 1.8 so that's this total distance right here will be 3.6 inches. Now we have to find the sizes of all of these PVC pipe pieces that go in between all the fittings. I know that from here to here is 1.8 because that's the length of the fitting. Same on this side 1.8 and I know that this piece from here to here in the middle is two and a half. That leaves approximately two inches here and here 
for both of those pieces. However, we have to take into account the fact that PVC pipes go about half an inch into the fittings. So since you need half an inch on either side, we'll add a full inch onto each of the pieces. So we know that this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece all need to be three inches. So actually two inches of the PVC pipe will be exposed and half an inch will be inside the fittings on either side. Now we have to find the length of this piece right here. We know that from here to here is 1.8 and the same on the other side, 1.8. So that leaves 2.4 inches in the middle there. And again, we have to add an inch because half an inch on either side will be inside of the pipe itself like that. So looking at the top view again, we know this piece and this piece, and even this piece in the middle, will all have to be 3.4 inches. The only other piece we have to take account for is the one attaching the elbow to the T right here on the side. Half an inch on either side means we need a one inch piece of PVC pipe in the middle there. So this guy right here is one inch. The only other thing we have to do with this sketch is count all the pieces that we need and make a list. Looking at this sketch, we will need one, two, three, four, five, six elbows. We will need one and two T's. We will need one, two, three, four three inch pieces of PVC pipe. And we will need one, two, and three 3.4 inch PVC pipe pieces. Finally, we need the one inch pieces and just two of them. So one, and two, and that's all. We're on a sketch, time to build. I actually have everything right here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make it. I don't have a pair of uh, pipe cutters to cut this like I do at school, so I'm just gonna use a saw. All right, I have all the stuff I need right here. All right, my frame's done. And every dimension is the size that I wanted it to be. This frame is mid-sized, so it has a nice balance between speed and stability. In the front, you can see the perfect spot for a hook to go, to stick out of the front like this. Pool noodles can go along the top for buoyancy. I plan to put my horizontal thrusters going like this, and then my vertical thruster can go right here from this top part. As you design your ROV, take into account how you're going to attach your thrusters to your ROV, not just where. If you're gonna use a zip tie, plan where the holes will go. I'll talk a lot more about hooks, buoyancy, and motor attachment in a later video. Don't worry about it too much right now, just plan ahead and make space. You also will want to put a few large holes on the top of your frame. You don't want the pipes to slowly fill up with water over time, as this will mess with your buoyancy. So it's best to just make holes and accept the water weight. Alternatively, you can seal your frame together somehow so that no water will get in. But this can be permanent, so it's a big decision to make, especially if later down the line you want to make a change to your frame. For that reason, I don't recommend sealing your frame, but it's always an option. Otherwise, just drill some big holes along the top. I'm going to put holes on top of each of the fittings. You can see all those black dots there. Before I go here, I want to stress that trying new things is the name of the game. Do not be scared to innovate or try something new. Be sure to check out my other videos where I show you the next steps, like how to assemble your thrusters and how to put your frame thrusters and controller all together. So I'll see you there.